Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top seven tips and pieces of advice for student teachers. In my last video, I shared my top seven tips and pieces of advice for teachers in college. Today's video is a little bit different. This is going to be geared toward teachers who are in their internship or student teaching. You will notice some of the pieces of advice are actually the same because I think these are things that all new teachers or beginning teachers or soon to be teachers should be doing, but there are some specific tips and pieces of advice for teachers who are actually in their internship. If you are enjoying this while you are watching it, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Let's jump in with tip number one, be open to feedback. Obviously, it can be difficult to receive criticism, but being able to take that feedback and learn and grow from it is extremely important during your internship. You have to keep in mind that you are still learning and there is so much that you don't know. There's so much that college cannot prepare you for. You have to just get into a classroom and start getting that hands-on experience in order to learn and grow from it. So there are going to be instances along the way where you have to receive some negative feedback from a mentor team Teacher or from an advisor that maybe is kind of hard to hear, but understand that you are still learning, you're still growing, and this is an opportunity for you to become better. Plus, during your student teaching, you are starting to make connections that could lead to your first teaching job. And keep in mind that administrators really want a teacher who is willing to learn and grow. So as you receive any criticism or feedback, just use it as an opportunity to make yourself better. Tip number two kind of goes along with that, make good first impressions. When you start your student teaching, you are gonna be making a lot of first impressions. You're gonna be making first impressions with the secretaries, with the administrators, with your mentor teacher, with your students, with your students' parents, and you want to make sure that you are making a positive first impression. Because again, these first impressions could lead to your first teaching job. A couple of ways that you can make a good first impression include being on time, dressing appropriately, and greeting everyone. Even those individuals that you maybe don't interact with on a daily basis, for example, custodians or secretaries, you wanna make sure that you are being as friendly with them as possible. They still play a role in the school community and you never know when an interaction with them could go on to either hurt you or help you. For example, if you come into the school every morning with a smile on your face, you're greeting the secretary, that secretary may mention that to the administrator and that could help you end up getting an interview if a job opens up in that school. When it comes to your mentor teacher or even an administrator, I know when I did my student teaching, I actually had the administrator sit in and observe a lesson of mine. You can then ask these individuals for a letter of recommendation. Make sure you give them plenty of time because there is nothing more frustrating than being asked for a letter of recommendation and saying, hey, I need it by the next day. Give them plenty of time. But if you make a positive, good first impression on these individuals, you could end up getting a letter of recommendation from them that could go on to help you get a job. And just a quick story for why it's good to make a first impression on students' parents. When I did my student teaching, there was a student in the class whose mom was actually a principal at another school. Because I had made a good first impression on her, I ended up getting to interview for a position at her school. I didn't end up getting that position, but again, because I had made a good first impression, she ended up recommending me to another principal where I interviewed and did in fact get my first teaching job. Tip number three is to ask as many questions as you can. I already mentioned that you are still learning and growing as a student teacher. And to go along with that, you're gonna have a lot of questions. I know sometimes it can be intimidating and you don't wanna ask the questions because you're worried that you'll look like you don't know what you're doing. But the reality is, Every teacher has been in that position. We have all gone through college. We've all gone through student teaching. We've all been in that first year position where you don't know what you're doing and that's okay. So any mentor teacher is going to understand. You're better to ask the question and actually get an answer than to not ask and be wondering what the answer was. 
So if you see your mentor teacher doing something and you're not sure why they're doing what they're doing, ask them. If you see your mentor teacher doing something and you want to remember, ask if you can take pictures and that's going to come back in our next tip, but be willing to ask as many questions as you can and then take notes of the answers. Like I said, that brings us to tip number four, which is to observe and take notes. During your student teaching, you should be observing everyone and everything. You should be observing your mentor teacher. You should be observing your students. You should be observing hopefully other teachers in the building, which that goes back to asking questions. Ask your mentor teacher if you can sit in on another teacher's class in order to observe them because you are developing your own style. We're going to come back to that in a minute, but you want to be able to observe as many different teachers and as many different teaching styles as possible. You you may think that you're going to remember everything and I guarantee you, you are wrong. <laughs> During your student teaching, you are going to be so busy and you're going to get overwhelmed very easily, which means you're going to forget a lot of the things that you've seen and observed. So make sure that you are also taking notes. Either keep a physical notebook like a composition book where you can write things down or take notes in the note app on your phone or even in a Google Doc. Just make sure you have a place to document everything that you're seeing. That includes things that you like, but also things that you don't like. If you observe something in a classroom and you know that that's not you and you don't wanna do that in your classroom, take a note of it. You also should be taking as many photographs and pictures as you can. So if you see something and you want to remember it, take a photo of it. Again, ask your mentor teacher, make sure that it's okay, but then keep those photos either in an album on your phone or make a folder in Google Drive where you can house all of them and be able to look back. This also will come in handy if you do have to prepare a portfolio at the end of your student teaching experience. I know that I had to create a portfolio and having those photographs was extremely helpful. Plus, you're probably gonna wanna have a portfolio when you go to interview for your first teaching job. And again, those photos are things that you can include in there. Tip number five is to keep any resources you can. I think this is important throughout your college experience as a teacher. You never know when you might want to look back on a lesson or a game or an activity, either just for the idea so that you can adapt it to work for your current class of students or to be able to use exactly what you've already created. I created so many lessons in college that I was then able to adapt and use when I got my first teaching job. Now, it was old school at the time. I didn't do a lot digitally, so I had printed copies of all of my lessons in binders, and I had probably three or four three-inch binders, like those super thick ones, full of all of those things that I had created, and I was so happy that I kept them. Now, you don't have to keep physical binders. You can keep all of these files digitally in Google Drive. Just make sure that you are not throwing anything away or deleting anything because you never know when you might need it. And again, be willing to ask your mentor teacher. So if you see something that he or she is using with their students, ask them if you can have a copy of it. Or again, if you can take a picture of it, because that can be something that you save and add to your stash of resources as well. Tip number six is to share your ideas. I know I already said at the beginning that when you're student teaching, you really don't know a lot. <laughs> Not to be harsh, but it is the reality. However, you do have good ideas and you need to be willing to share those ideas with your mentor teacher or with other teachers that you're interacting with or with other classmates. I know when I was in my student teaching, I had a seminar that I had to attend once a week where I would connect with other student teachers and I would share a lot of ideas with them. They would share ideas with me and that would help me be able to continue to learn and grow as an educator. When I was in the classroom with my mentor teacher, I often was kind of intimidated and scared to share my ideas because I thought they weren't worthwhile. But once I started sharing my ideas, my mentor teacher realized that I had a lot of new, fresh ideas, especially related to technology and maybe some newer teaching methods that she had not previously been using. So I did hold value, even though there was a lot I still had to learn and a lot that I still had to be able to grow into, I did hold valuable ideas. Plus, the more that you share with your mentor teacher and then he or she shares back with you, the more you can become co-teachers, which is truly what student teaching should be. It shouldn't be one teacher teaches and then sits down and then the other teacher teaches. It should be the two of you together 
educating the students. And so being able to share ideas and collaborate on lessons and activities, that's going to help benefit your students and give them a stronger educational experience. And finally, tip number seven is to develop your own style. No two teachers are ever exactly the same. Every single teacher has a unique style that fits their personality. So part of your journey as a student teacher should be developing your own style. As you observe your mentor teacher or other teachers in the building, take note of the things that you like that would fit your personality and the things that maybe don't fit your personality. Do not just try to mimic exactly what your mentor teacher does, but watch what your mentor teacher does and then adapt and tweak that in order to fit you. Again, this is why it's helpful to observe as many different teachers as possible. So again, ask your mentor teacher if you can maybe sit in on another class in the building for a day or even just a class period to see how they teach so you can get as many different ideas as possible. All right, that is it. Those are my top seven tips or pieces of advice for student teachers. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. And if it was, give it a thumbs up. Now, if you are still early in your journey to become a teacher, maybe you just started college or you're even still in high school, I do have a video for you with my top seven tips and pieces of advice. So make sure that you go back and watch that video. While you're at it, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.